All right, let's see. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for doing this. Um, because you're kind of an up-and-coming star in the scene right now, especially since 2019, raising the comeback of Reflections and I the Breeder, which now is just Breeder, right? You changed the name. It's kind of whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's still, like, technically I the Breeder, but, like, I feel like everybody just calls it Breeder, that it's just kind of what we call it. Um, but it is still, like, technically I the Breeder. That, and, and like changing the name on social media and stuff like that is like impossible. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because so. I saw the Facebook page was still I the Breeder when I looked it up earlier. So I was like, wait, well, what is it yeah, now? Yeah, and, and the Spotify is the same. Like changing all that would have been just like a nightmare. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. it's basic. It's basically just like whatever you want to call it. I mean, I, I call it I the Breeder still. Um, uh, Sean calls it Breather and then people just call it whatever, you know? They, uh, ITB breather or whatever. I, I mean, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the last release that uh, I the breather did was actually the first song you wrote for the band. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, pray. That's yeah, cool. yeah. That, that was the was the. Well, I wrote a bunch of demos. That was actually the second demo that I wrote. I wrote a song before that, um, but yeah, that's the song that we agreed on, liked, and, and put out. So yeah, that was the first one. So how did this all happen? Because I did a little bit of research and in both bands, you haven't been there for like the entire ride, like only for the past two, maybe three years with some behind the scenes stuff going on, you've been part of Reflections and Ida Breeder. Um, how did all of that happen? Oh man, <laughs> I've, had, uh, I've had quite the journey um, and I've also like lived all over the united states like um i don't even know where to begin with this so i guess without going super super far back um because i kind of got to set this whole thing up because it's all it's all like uh it it, it all fell into place in kind of like a really weird way mm -hmm. and like if i didn't do certain small things along the way like i wouldn't have gotten the opportunities so it kind of makes sense if i if i go back to like um, I was living in New Hampshire. I want to say this was like 2018. Um, I was living in New Hampshire at the time. Um, or maybe it was 2017. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 2018, 2017, one of those times. I was living in New Hampshire. I was playing in a band called Altered Perceptions. They were like a smaller deathcore band. They were on Artery Recordings. Um, I joined that band, uh, we played around, and through that band I had met another band called uh, Falsifier, which is a Canadian band, which uh, is kind of in the same vein, a little bit more like, I guess, what you would call like beat down. Yeah. Um, and I went on a tour with them, and during that tour we had gone to the, the West Coast, we played in California. And we had seen a band there called Mother Sound. Uh, we played with them. I really liked them. We finished the tour. And as soon as I got home from that tour, I found out that my parents, because at the time I was still living with my parents, uh, they were moving from New Hampshire to Arizona, which is like completely cross country. Yeah. And they were like, they were like, hey, uh, you know, you can come with us if you want. You can stay here, like do whatever you want. Um, and I decided to go with them just because I had lived in New Hampshire for like eight years and I was pretty over it. Um, so I, I moved cross country and basically like completely started over. I had no band, nothing. Um, and then I remembered when I was there, I was like, man, do I know anybody out here who I could play with, maybe reach out to? And I remember seeing that band that we had played with on that tour, Mother Sound. Uh, which is, it wasn't like that style I was doing. It wasn't like deathcore. It was more of like a, it was more of a metalcore gent kind of style, like a, like a Silent Planet or Invent Animate. Yeah. It was kind of like that type of a band where it's like very like sad, melodic, but still heavy. Yeah. Um, so I reached out to them. Uh, I ended up joining that band. They were based out of Los Angeles. So... I was like a nine hour drive for me. So pretty much 
the whole year that I lived there, which would have been like 2018 into 2019, I think, something like that. Um, yeah, that's when I I was touring with them, and then through other stories that I don't have to get into, I ended up uh, moving to uh, Louisiana, which is where I am now. Mm -hmm. um, and then during my time with Mother Sound, uh, you know, I was in that band for about a year before I moved and, uh, you know, we broke up and everything. Uh, I was really missing that like heavy, heavy music that I was playing before. Uh, so, and at the time too, I was like, really really getting into you know like thaw right yeah uh i was like super up all about it i was like i really want to play this kind of stuff so i'll just make a solo project for fun you know and just like do whatever i want with it and kind of have this creative outlet that i i don't get with my main band yeah and you know it was also a way for me to try out a lot of stuff that i wanted to try out with uh like marketing you know different tactics like that where i could just use a solo project as like a guinea pig for all this stuff that i wanted to do yeah, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't really matter because it was just like a for fun thing um so that that project's called dal av um i made that and then you know i, I put out like an ep um and then I moved to Louisiana, like pretty much right after that. And then, uh, so that would have been summer of 2019 when all that happens. And then about two weeks after me moving here and, you know, not really being in that same position again, not really knowing what I'm going to do. Um, I had Jake from Reflections uh, send me a message on Facebook. And he was like, hey, dude, uh, I've been following your your solo project for a little bit. And like, I really like the music you make. Um, would you be interested in like, you know, maybe it, it kind of started as like, would you be interested in like collabing on this album? You know, uh, he was at a point where he had like a bunch of demos, um, but he he wasn't like confident enough in his own guitar playing to like finalize everything yeah so he reached out to me and he was like hey man uh i like your stuff you want, would you be interested in doing this and then kind of see where it goes from there um and obviously i was like yeah dude like i've got literally nothing else going on at the time i did I, like i had just moved to so i didn't have a job or anything so i was just like I, I, I got that in like August, uh, August of 2019. So it's been almost two years now, um, that message. And pretty much like August to like October, I just like locked myself in a room and just like finished up what there was uh, to do with like Willow, you know? Yeah. Uh, Retracking a lot of stuff, uh, adding new stuff, adding new songs. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's basically how that happened. And then the I joined I the Breather in May of uh, 2020. So it's been a little over a year now. And Sean, he told me, so he basically the same thing happened. He reached out to me on like Facebook or something like that. And basically just asked me there. So it was like the same type of situation. Uh, but he said that uh he had posted he made some like status uh asking like you know like who's like the heaviest guitar player right now or whatever something like that uh and a lot of people were like oh you need to check out willow because it had just came out um so all these people were like check out willow it's like the heaviest thing right now um and that's kind of how he found out about me so <laughs> it's like <laughs> sorry for the super long story but it's like all these little things if i didn't do them you know what i mean like if i didn't yeah. make my my solo project jake would have never seen like the guitar videos i was posting and ask me and then if i never joined uh reflections and, and put out willow sean would have never like been told about it to hit me up so it's just like all these small little things that you do that you you feel like don't really matter in the moment uh actually really do you know yeah like just something as small as like oh i'm gonna just like put out music for fun on like a solo project that no one's ever gonna listen to because it's like 
the super like <laughs> underground genre. <laughs> And then it just like led to all this stuff. So I mean, it's been it's been really cool. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of times that you see that like the smaller things that you do, like the very small changes you make in a lifestyle, or like for example, you you be moving around a lot. You could have chosen way at the start like to stay at your old place and let your parents move yeah, by themselves, and right. you would still just be there and probably not be in reflection of either breeder or anything at all. <laughs> yeah, I think about that all the time because I I was definitely considering staying there um, just because it was comfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I had so many I had so many friends there from just living there for so long, and like I grew up like in that that local scene. So I just knew everybody uh, like in the music scene and and all of that. So to just like just up and leave it and, and completely start over when I was like, I don't know, that was when I was like 24 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I just felt like, damn, dude, like that's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, I feel like, you, you know that saying where it's like, uh, if you go looking for trouble, like you'll find it. Yeah. I think the same thing applies to opportunities. Like if you actively go and look for opportunities and you're putting yourself out there, like you will find it. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter where you are. Um, you know, a lot of people have excuses of, of like where they live, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and nowadays it's just like with the internet, you could do so much. I mean, everything I've ever done to get me to where I am now has solely just been like the internet. I mean, I've, I've played a lot and I've toured a lot, but most of my live experience didn't really get me those opportunities you know what i mean yeah, yeah. It, it definitely helps it goes hand in hand right obviously um, yes but yeah it's just <laughs> you, you really have to like be putting yourself out there and looking for things you know yeah yeah, people still underestimate the power of the internet every day. Like, I see so many small bands complain about how they're not getting any listeners or their clips aren't getting views or whatever. Um, and then, especially me, because, like, my YouTube channel revolves around, around reviews and reactions. Like, I get hit up a lot by small bands. Like, yo, do you right. want to do a video? And the first thing I tell them is, like, I want to do a video, but it's not going to do anything for you. It's going to help my <laughs> yeah. channel a bit, but you're not going to grow for it because, like... The only thing that exists then is my video and their socials are empty. They're not promoting anything. They're not pushing anything. And I'm like, how do you right. expect people to find that video in the first place if you're not doing anything actively on the Internet? Right. <laughs> yeah. People underestimate uh, it. It's so weird. Yeah, I feel like musicians have uh, like such such a bad habit of like, like not never thinking about the business side of things, which mm -hmm. is like half the battle you know what i mean i feel like a good rule of thumb is like however much like time effort and money that you put into creating your song or or album or whatever it needs to be matched equally with your marketing yeah 100 percent. because like <laughs> every musician's like oh if the song is good people will listen to it and i'm like <laughs> That's not true. There's no. a lot of really good songs <laughs> that people don't listen to. Uh, you got to get it out there. It's, I mean, it's, it sucks. I feel that. I kind of hate it too because I just want to like, I just want to write music and be like, here it is, guys. <laughs> Magically have like but, a million listeners. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but unfortunately it doesn't work like that especially now because there's so many people putting oh out yeah music. It's, oh it's yeah it's so easy it's so easy i mean anybody with a, a laptop you know like a macbook pro can just just record a song now and all you need to do is pay distro kid like 20 bucks a year and there you go yeah unlimited music to upload to the world <laughs> yeah exactly exactly kind of nuts uh and like every everything with recording now versus like when i started is so easy it's so easy now like you basically just get some like you get some uh get good drums and neural dsp and you load it up like stock <laughs> and you're like wow this sounds fucking sick <laughs> yeah exactly exactly
Yeah, neural B neural DSP out here really saving the life of a lot of guitarists. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny that you bring that up because one of my questions is about that, how um, we evolved from like carrying around half stacks and full stacks to play live. And if you wanted to record, you had to get like a very expensive mic and you had to wire it right. perfectly in front of the cab because otherwise it would sound like shit. <laughs> and now literally, as you said, everyone with a laptop, an interface and a plugin that's not even, there's a lot of free guitar plugins that are also really, yeah. really good can literally record music and put out music. Um, so since you're, because you're, you're a neural DSP artist. Um, yes, yep. I want to know your opinion on how that has affected the music scene. Do you think it's a good or a bad thing that the opportunity is there for a lot of people? Because a lot of good music is coming out, but as you said, there's so many people putting out music that mostly a lot of good music is getting pushed away by a lot of bad music that's also being put out because people don't know um, how production works or stuff like that. What's, right, right. what's your opinion on that, on how it all became so easy? Oh man, <laughs> that's a tough one. I feel like it's a good thing. I mean, if anybody who wants to make music should be able to make music. Um, and then at the end of the day, what it comes back to is like, you know, how much do you really care about it? Um, because if you're, if you want to make music and put it out, cool. But it'll it'll stop there, you know? Like yeah. your mom and dad and, and brother or whatever are going to be the people who listen to it. If you, you know, care about it and take it very seriously and want to go farther than just, hey, I'm doing this for fun. Um, I mean, that's like a whole different skill set, you know? Being yeah. able to just record the song, that's cool, man. Like, I think anyone should be able to do that. Um, but the, for the people who, who want to do it like for a living or, you know what I mean? Like want to go on, you know, some bigger tours, whatever, the, whatever the reason is for getting music out there, like they can then go and do that step that will push them a, like forward past the other people who just kind of want to put out music for fun. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. I think they're, I think it's a good thing to answer your question, but I, I understand why some people would say it's not, um, but to those people, I would say there are a lot of tools that make, um, that, that kind of make that irrelevant, that fear of, oh, there's too much stuff out right now. Yeah. yeah. There, I mean, just like Facebook ads, that's it. The end of the day, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you could do so much. It takes uh, it takes a lot of experimenting and, and really learning what you're doing with it. But I mean, anybody who <laughs> wants to get it out there is gonna put in the work, you know? Yeah. That's all I ever did uh, was just like, you know, that's, that's one of the things I was talking about with my solo project is because I was in these bands and nobody would really let me take control of like, oh, I want to I wanna try to do this tactic or this. Um, so I just did it all with my solo project, an ongoing process. And this also ties in with the whole business side of things. Um, I think a lot of things that have to do with being a musician and an artist like i feel i i personally feel like those are two different things like you're you have musicians and you have artists i feel like artists value the business side of things way more of getting their music out there because there's like like the bedroom musicians as we call them <laughs> yeah uh, basically how everyone starts uh starts off these days it's like okay, you're a great player, you're a great musician, now what are you going to do with it? And it's like you say, people say like, yeah, I'm going to put it on Spotify so people can listen to it. And people will listen to it, like all five people in your town. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and that's it. That's literally it. I do understand that. And I think something that has happened with the modern age, and this is something that I annoy myself a lot about it, and I shouldn't because I've been like that. Um, is putting something out before it's finished. Like yeah. You write something, <laughs> you get very excited. You're like, oh my God, this is amazing. You have all this new technology, which as you said, makes it sound really good. Like GGD, Neural right. DSP. Yep. It's like, oh my God, this is amazing. You know, do basic mixing, no mastering, because you don't know what that's <laughs> about, you know? <laughs> 
and just put it out there. And then like half a year later, you listen back, you're like, oh my God, what was I thinking? But right. it's like, that puts a stamp on you as an artist because people saw like, oh, you released that. They listened to it. They're like, whoa, this is garbage. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> they're not going to check out your future stuff. Like you already have to redeem yourself right. after the first right. release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, I mean, there's there's bands like that, like uh, Design the Skyline. You remember that band? From oh back in my the day? God, but, yes! Like, <laughs> that first song, it was just so bad, and everybody hated it. And then they put out music later that was like, honestly, it was like pretty pretty good. You yeah. know, like I I wouldn't say that it was anything I listened to, but comparatively and and for the time that it was put out like it stood up with other bands yeah um but nobody took it seriously no <laughs> no exactly because that's what you do like if you put out and it, it's okay if it's one single but i think they put out like a, was it a full album or like an extended ep i don't like the first thing they put out it was like yeah i think it was an album i think it was an album and it was oh my god like I feel, I feel bad for saying it, but it was horrendous. Like, it was actually horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you shouldn't say that about other artists, but it's it's just the truth. And then, as you said, like, the things they, they put out after that were okay. Like, considered, like, scene-wise, like, looking at what the music standard was back then, it was actually pretty pretty decent. Right, yeah. But no one takes it seriously anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's all about... It's all about growth, you know? Like, I'm happy for those dudes that, I mean, that video that nobody liked, I mean, that that shit blew up. It was everywhere. Yeah, it was yeah. Every, I mean, that even that alone is kind of cool. Um, but obviously, you know, I mean, I imagine that must have been, like, so rough, especially because they were, like, like wicked young. So yeah. I, I can't imagine being, like, 18 or whatever, and, like, people are just trashing this, like, because when I was 18, I didn't really write that great of music either. No, exactly. <laughs> you know? So just I can't imagine like, oh, like I tried really hard on this song and everybody fucking hates it. Like this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so the the fact that you know th those members, you know, even even continued making music and 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 the music was better and then you know eventually some of them went off to other bands and continued making music like that i think that takes a lot of courage yeah to be honest it's, the internet's fucking rough dude people will tear you apart and they do any chance they get uh and it can be kind of rough man so yeah. to any anybody who like keeps going and like pushing forward I, I think that's uh very respectable you know yeah 100 percent um especially it with like there's a lot of internet bands these days like bands that do not play live which also get criticized right. all the time because they don't play live. <laughs> it does um like <laughs> buried alive is one such project that gets all the hate um i don't know yes. if you're familiar yeah. with charles stuff i mean Considering you're in reflections, I am. Yes, he is. He's like a really great guitar player, though. Um, a lot of people do give him crap. I don't really know why. Like, I understand that the music might not be for everybody, but man, I can't tell you the amount of times I've seen a video or something that I don't like on the internet, and then I just scroll. I just keep going. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't understand the people who are like, who are like they see just somebody playing guitar and they're like, oh god, fuck you, dude. <laughs> exactly. Like, just move on with your life. Like, if you don't yeah. like it, you don't like it. No biggie. Like, <laughs> right. Like, it really isn't supposed to be for everybody. <laughs> if you look at them now, yeah, like they've blown up. Like, it's insane. They just push through the hate and. Yeah, I mean, he, the dude is wicked talented. I mean, he definitely deserves to be, you know, at the level that he's at. I mean, he's got so much talent, um, and he makes really cool stuff. Um, isn't, um, like, Infinite Annihilator one of those bands, too? Like, they don't play live, I don't yeah. think? Yeah, or not a lot. Like, I think they play, like, four or five live shows. But wow. I don't In, like, think... like, ten years or whatever? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think they're an actual live band. Um, I know... One of the shit, I forgot. I totally forgot his name. Uh, their drummer uh, plays live with Black Thong, but that's oh, like, no kidding. Okay. yeah.
but that's like slam beat down type stuff. Right. It's like the exact opposite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but they're they're another band that's like so cool, and like people just like really rip on them. Yeah. I think it's they're mostly like, because they like, mean you'll so never hard. be able to play this. Like you guys are a bunch <laughs> of fakes. <laughs> Like Aaron has said, it. Aaron, that's his name, Aaron Kitcher. Oh my God, how could I forget that? Like he said it publicly. Like, what, what, the, what does it matter if I can't play it? Like, first of all, I can, and fuck you. Second of all, <laughs> it's an internet project. It's not supposed to be played live. Yeah, and, and it's, it's like, you know, marketed as like the like most extreme shit that you'll listen to, which it kind of is. <laughs> it's supposed to be like absolutely ridiculous and like. I don't know. Sometimes you just got to take music for what it is, you know, like doesn't you don't have to like I feel like metal fans are the worst with this. No. They sit down and they're like they tear apart a mix. They're like they're like, "Oh, dude, that snare's fucking garbage, dude." And like <laughs> somebody who listens to like pop or something would be like, "Oh, man, you know, sounds pretty good." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, uh, I never get that cuz like I I guess like I catch myself doing that sometimes, but I don't I don't like it doesn't ruin shit for me, you know? No. And I don't go around like, oh, you know, this is the worst sounding snare in the world. Fuck this band. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, if it's a good song, like, and it's halfway done, like, like mixed well, then fuck it, dude. Just listen to the damn song. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I say this all the time. Unironically, Saint Anger is the best Metallica album there is. Now that we're talking Jake about snare, with you. <laughs> Jake loves that album, dude. <laughs> like I'm a diehard Metallica fan. I like all of their stuff, and people hated Saint Anger so much for the snare alone. And I think it's a banger of an album. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But it's true. Like people just ah, oh, the amount of times that like me and our, our other guitarists, we do the same thing. Like we, I'm learning now how to produce and mix. And I right. suck at it. Like, I'm absolute garbage <laughs> at it. And he does, like, he does URM and Nail the Mix and stuff. So he has, like, right. a few years ahead of me. And every time I will send him a mix. And, like, he's always brutally honest. So I'll just get a text back, like, yeah, it's trash. Like, you just got to. <laughs> 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 but, like, I'm starting to learn more now. And then when we're in the car together or we're just sicking out songs, they're just sitting there, like, a snare sounds like shit. Yeah, it was a good song. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you just do it automatically, but it's no reason to hate a band. Like, it's just... Right, right. There's nothing wrong with picking out shit like that, uh, especially when you record music. I mean, it helps you get better at it. Um, I just think it's ridiculous when it's like, oh, the the snare EQ is, you know, got too much of, like, a, like a high-end uh, whatever, and then... That's it. Like, I'll never listen to this band again. <laughs> yeah. Some people really are like that. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's whack. Like, and that, I mean, that also comes with the whole modern age of making and recording music because those people probably sit at home, like, spend 18 hours a day working on a mix to make it sound perfect. And it just becomes, I don't think they do it intentionally, to be completely honest. I think it's just they mix so much. Because they want to be the best at it, that they're just gonna critique everything yeah. they hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I feel like it's kind of the culture of 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 metal right now too. It's like we all kind of do that to each other, which yeah. it can be it can be good and it can be bad, right? Like it's good to like, uh, you know, inspire each other to be better and do better, yeah. but then it's also like kind of toxic to oh, you're not at a certain level, well, then, like, you're garbage and don't talk to me. Like, because yeah. that's kind of how it is, like, in, in the scene. Um, and, I mean, there's a lot of things that I've, I've been seeing over the past, you know, probably five or six years that uh, I, I haven't really enjoyed with the scene, which is, I've been trying to, you know because i accidentally became like a thal guy and like everybody fucking knows me for being like a thal guy now um and it's you know it's not like a new style of music it's more of like uh you know it's been around for a while uh it's just starting to get some traction now for yeah. some reason 
uh, and like kind of being like uh, you know one of the people more in the in the front of that you know along with like with like Buster the the Village Arda guys um, Daniel uh, Kale or Cal I'm not really sure how he pronounces his name um, those guys um, I think it's important to bring back like the roots you know yeah like the roots of why like the reason that i got into metal and shit um other than like liking the music is because it was a place <laughs> for people who felt like they don't belong anywhere yes and now it doesn't feel like that anymore and it feels very like it makes me sad dude it makes me so sad for like kids now yeah because it's not it's not the way that it was when i was like 14 um where I, you know, you could go to a show and it felt like everybody was like a family and like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody really, really like cared about each other. And like, yes. that's what I want to try to bring back, you know, um, with just, you know, like uh, you're, you're in the, uh, the Thal discord. I made the discord, the Facebook group. Um, I just, I'm trying to make a community around, you know, Thal just because it's like easily like recognized now and it's kind of upcoming so like the more people that join in the more the community can grow but i really want to build a community that that really reflects that um that culture that i experienced as a kid getting into metal and that's like dude it doesn't matter like who you are where you're from what you look like what you believe in what you even listen to none of that shit matters like we're we're all brothers and sisters we're all family and we're coming together to just like love each other and support each other and you know any like you don't even have to have like a common anything we're just coming together under music which is like a common language for everyone it doesn't yeah. even have to be like <laughs> thal or metalcore or, or deathcore or whatever it doesn't have to be that you know you can come into the thal group and and drop some alicia keys and i'm sure like a bunch of us would be like, yo, this mix is sick, dude, or like whatever, <laughs> like, yo, that melody is awesome, you know what I mean? Exactly, uh, exactly. That's the point of it. That's what I'm trying to do with music right now. Um, I think it's it's super important. I think it's something that has been lost, uh, and I don't know. I'm just trying to encourage the, the people that I talk to or that come to me, whatever, um, to just love everybody, you know what I mean? Just like yeah. spread some love, especially within the last, like, year you know all the crazy shit that happened last year yeah um i mean i thought it was important before that but now it's like you know there's a lot of things that were revealed to people um especially somebody as, such as myself who you know like i'm like a middle class white dude um and i don't see like a lot of struggles right yeah and i got opened up to like a bunch of shit that i didn't even know was going on um not to be all like preachy or whatever you know but i just think it's important to just uh care about everybody you know yeah like <laughs> let's just support each other you know what i mean that's what's important i think that's what i'm trying to do yeah I'll end rants now <laughs> <laughs> no that's amazing i mean like i feel it's exactly like you say it's definitely gotten lost um over the years let's say especially the, the last 10 years um because it's always been something that i wanted to do as well and in my first band my other bandmates didn't have that whole like mindset like they were just like right. we're playing music for us and like fuck the fans you know right right and i never was like I, like i always interacted with a lot of people in the audience and it was always a lot of fun and it was like back then like i'm, I'm talking about nine ten years ago now when that whole split became a thing between regular metal and modern metal you know the elitist versus the core <laughs> kids yeah and the worst part about it is that that has just grown over the years like it, you, you cannot go anywhere like to a regular metal show and wear a band shirt from a modern metal band because people will call you out like why what, what's yeah. the fucking point <laughs> i would i would actively be thinking about like Oh, if I'm going to this show, I cannot wear this shirt. And like, that's not okay. That's dude. fucked up. That's fucked <laughs> it up. It is, dude. Like, 
man, if somebody wants to come to like a reflection show, just for example, um, or like a slaughter to prevail show, something like heavy, right? And they want to wear like a falling in reverse t-shirt. I don't give a shit, dude. <laughs> I no, don't care at all. Exactly. Man. Exactly. That's why I think conversations like this that are a lot more open-ended uh, are are better for for uh, you know people who are you know I mean if it's just like an entertainment thing then whatever but if it's somebody who's like oh I need to like maybe get some information out of this yeah hope hopefully there was a piece in there at all that was helpful <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think a lot of people are gonna either relate to it or are gonna be like you know what he's right i gotta do start doing my shit differently because like you know like the, all the things we talked about the music industry the way the scene is evolving um the way you look at things and how you pursue your career i think is very important for people to know so they can and this is something that i wish i knew when i got into the music scene like be prepared for a lot of shit like there's a lot of things yeah. gonna be coming at you out of nowhere and you're not gonna be prepared like please for the love of god do not think that you're ready for this because you're not like right. you gotta you gotta be through it all before you can say like okay i'm ready for round two like <laughs> <laughs> yep that's uh and and i haven't even like i can't i have literally have issues imagining like I've been in the music industry for about 10 years now and I haven't even seen like the slightest bit of it, you know, I've been always been on the smaller right. side and then there's reflections and Ida Breeder who are like mid tier, you know, like there, there's already right, like a right. lot of traction going on. But if you then look at bands like, let's say, I don't know, like Fela Maya or like the big Sumerian bands or like bands that aren't unique leader and shit, like I'm like, what kind of bullshit have you guys been through before you got at that point? You know, if I've if I've yeah. gone through this amount of shit already and I'm just like all the way at the at the bottom, like what have <laughs> those guys gone through, you know? Like if people yeah. say it gets easier, but I don't believe that. I think it just gets harder. It uh Huh. It gets I suppose it depends on it's everything's very situational, you know, um, for everybody. Uh, it definitely to me has gotten harder because you can only get, uh, you can only get shit on so many times before you're like, fuck dude, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like 12 years of just like always running into a wall or somebody's pushing you down, like that gets in the beginning like you're still hungry for it and you're like fuck yeah like whatever i don't care after like 10 12 years of that you're like man i'm tired of this shit yeah exactly <laughs> but you know the the way that you really know that like you're you're meant to be doing something is is when you don't quit even when you're like i'm gonna quit like i hate this but the next day you wake up and you're like Ah, shit, dude, I gotta open up my laptop and play guitar today. Like, shit, I can't quit. <laughs> like, I gotta do this, man. <laughs> uh, that's kind of how it's been for me, uh, you know, because there's been, there's been a lot of really bad stuff that has happened. Um, like, a lot of people have done not nice things, uh, and a lot of people would quit from that, but the bigger picture is is a lot better and it's worth it if you can stick it out you know yeah because like you'll at least for me like you know you'll never be able to like live with yourself if you aren't able to put a hundred percent into it and like see it through whether that means you 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 i don't want to say fail uh, because I feel like if you put 100% into something and it doesn't come out the way that you were hoping, that's not a failure, no. you know? Failing is is exactly <laughs> like what your mom would probably tell you. Failure is uh, <laughs> when you quit. But yeah. I mean, there's truth to that. Uh, you just want to be able to live with yourself at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, so like if you can, if you can walk away from something and, and feel fulfilled in that, then that's success to me. You know yeah. what I mean? Because, I mean, 
if you think about it, there's always you can always go up, dude. You can always be at a higher level. Yeah. So like, you can like no matter what, you'll be walking away from something. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what level you're at. It's just, are you happy with what you've done with your time doing it? That's what matters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you try something and it doesn't work out, but the next day you wake up and you try it again, that's not failure, that's a lesson. Exactly. Yes, and <laughs> unless you have somebody who can walk you through every piece of this industry specifically for you you'll have a lot of lessons <laughs> yeah there's gonna be a lot of walls there's gonna be a lot of lessons there's gonna be a lot of disappointments and there's gonna be a lot of bad contracts being signed that you're gonna regret for the rest of your life <laughs> yeah but uh i don't know it's not all bad it no, isn't it's not there's a lot a lot of good with it too like one thing that I do wonder, because um, you, when we were texting over Discord, you told me about your job. Um, yes. You have reflections to work for. You have Ida Breeder to work for. You have your solo project, and you're still working a full time job. Is that how you're? I work a full time job, and I'm also in school full time as well. Excuse me, where do you find the time? I uh, <laughs> I just don't sleep, dude. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit of a workaholic, but <laughs> damn. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's all. That's a, a thing that a lot of people need to learn as well. Like I, I still feel like so many people go into this industry like balls through the wall, thinking they're gonna do this for a living and like unless you're at the top top forget yeah. about it you're not gonna do this as a full-time job like well think about it too like look at the people who are at the top top like periphery for example i would consider them to be you know the top of gents at least yeah. um they all have businesses all of them have another job um <laughs> so what does that tell you yeah <laughs> you know what i mean I'm like you know if they were if they were single dudes living in a one bedroom apartment yeah probably they'd be fine on periphery royalties yeah um but i mean they're all like what in their 30s with like wives and uh a mortgage so <laughs> yeah. yeah they're not gonna be able to survive off of just just the music itself um that's why they all have their other businesses yeah what like horizon devices get good drums uh nolly has a recording studio matt goes around and does like drum workshops all the time yeah yeah they all do a bunch of stuff but yeah there is no uh making it to the top and just living off of music no. But I mean, that's that's what I thought when I was a kid. I was like, oh, fuck it. I don't need to go to school or I'm just going to do this. And then I ended up going to school anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is that I did it at the same time. Like I got my bachelor's degree while I was touring. Like I would just I would have a hotspot on my phone. I'd connect my computer and I would I was doing online school and like any on tour, there's a lot of downtime. Uh, you know, there's a lot of driving around. There's a lot of waiting around. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just pop open my laptop and that's how I did my <laughs> my bachelor's degree. Um, I mean, it works. If there's a way to do it, you'll find a, a way to get it done. Um, and that's just... The, the degree for me was my, my backup plan. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that was a way for me to like secure that you know one day when i walk away from music or if i have to quit or something in my life happens where i can't do it anymore like well at least now i can get like a halfway decent job i won't have to like work at mcdonald's <laughs> yeah 
you can find the opportunities when you're looking for them kind of yes. full circle to what I said at, at the beginning. <laughs> like, <laughs> you just have to be looking for them and, and, and you don't have to know exactly what you want for your life, but, uh, doing something is better than doing nothing, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let the, let you enjoy the rest of your day. Go Dude, ahead. thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun hanging out. Yeah. And just talking. 100%. 100%. Really, really enjoyed it. I'm very, very happy, like with all my guests, that you enjoyed it as well. It's the most important thing for me. If you're having a good time, I'm happy. <laughs>